very good day to everyone um, tuning in today. Uh, we welcome everyone tuning in today and we are so very grateful that you are with us today as it is an honor once again for us to share the word of God on this platform um, as it is our heart to reach the, um, the lost with the gospel but also to equip the saints for the work of ministry and that is also a, um, a goal that we have for this channel is to set those um, that are in the body of Christ to set them blaze with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ because revival is not for the world but for the church to get set ablaze and get set apart to go and win the lost for the Lord Jesus Christ and then it will from revival uh, what will happen from then is is a great awakening will take place we will we where we will see a nation turn to God why because of the church of Jesus Christ that got set ablaze in Jesus mighty name and while I'm on the topic of the fire of God and being set ablaze today's title today's title is in fact about the fire of God but it is about the title of today's message is to keep the fire burning keep the fire burning is the title of today's message and once again I'm glad for everyone that's tuning in today before we carry on with the rest of this video please like share and subscribe click the notification bell for any future content that you'd want to be notified of and if you do that you'll be notified of it um, so please stay tuned for more videos and more content to to come on this channel so without further ado let's get started with today's message keep the fire burning keep the fire burning you know um, we've spoken on this channel about um, salvation we've spoken about the, the uh, baptism uh, immersion in water we've spoken about baptism in the Holy Ghost we've spoken about all of that so uh, uh, if you haven't seen those videos um, that we where we have taught on on those subjects please go back and watch them um, but if you if if you are a person today that you've already received the baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire you've been born again you've been blood washed and all of that but your question today is how do I keep what I have received and how do I not only keep it but how do I obtain more how do I not burn out because you know when I was a when I just came to the Lord, that was the biggest worry of people around me was they, and, and some people, how can I say, because they worry about you and because you are like, you are setting a trail for the gospel and you're just going out and you're just preaching the gospel everywhere, people are out of, out of a good heart, they come to you and say you have to slow down, you're going to burn out. But let me tell you right now, there's a secret to that you don't have to slow down in what you're doing but you also don't have to burn out so you can actually do more than what you did at first and not burn out you know people tell you to slow down cool it a bit because you're gonna burn out you know you want to be running for years and years and years and years but my my thing is that why why is burning out why would you even why would burn out even be an, an uh, something that would happen to a person that stays in prayer, stays in the word. But I'm jumping ahead of myself, uh, so let's get started. So my point is this, that you don't have to burn out and you don't have to allow people to tell you you have to slow down because you're gonna burn out. You can run faster for Jesus more than you did in the beginning and not burn out because of the things which we're gonna speak about today. So if your worry was ever, I don't wanna burn out, rest assured if you stick to these principles that we are going to learn today then you will then you will not burn out in jesus name okay revelation 2 verse 1 to 5 i'm going to read i'm going to start from um verse 1 because okay, so revelation chapter 1 unto the angel unto the angel of the church of ephesus write these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of seven golden candlesticks okay so let me just give us a little bit of background as to what is happening here the book of revelation was given to john the revelator where the lord gave john uh, he, he spoke to john 
intimately as to what would happen in the in the last days and also um, he, he spoke to John the Revelator about saying um, that saying in, in Revelation 2 and 3 that there were letters to be delivered unto churches and 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 he and God was going to deliver those letters unto the churches but uh, John the revelator knew what God's heart was concerning all these churches that's why I wrote this down but it's God who delivered these letters to the churches it was the angel of the church which is the pastor of the church that received these letters but this this is what John penned down what God uh, revealed unto him about these churches and John penned this down in Revelation 2 unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write these seven saith he these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks okay so it's Jesus writing to these seven churches because it says these things these things saith he that holds the seven stars in his right hand so who holds the seven stars in his right hand it is Jesus I know that Jesus is writing to this church in Ephesus and he's saying I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say thou are apostles and are not and hast found them liars and hast borne and hast patience and for my name's sake hast labored and hast not fainted nevertheless I have somewhat against thee because thy Thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and report and repent. And do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and I will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. And then carries on to say, He that overcomes, the Lord will give them a reward. But I want to I want to say this one thing, yeah. The Lord is rebuking this church and saying, You have got so many good good qualities. How you labor for me. How you how you can even spot those that are false, false apostles and false prophets. How you can discern who is godly and who is not. But I've got one thing against you that you have first left your first love. Therefore repent and do the same works that you did at first. So a number one way to keep the fire burning is to keep that first love now i'm not even at the heart to keep the fire burning yet but from but from this you can already pick up what you by by by, by seeing what the churches did wrong you can see what you have to do right in order to keep your fire burning so this church here ephesus they lost their fire they lost their first love so uh, so how did they lose their fire because they lost their first love they were so caught up in serving and doing these all these things but they lost they took their somewhere along the line they took their eyes off Jesus and they put their eyes on their ministry they put their eyes on their efforts they put their eyes on their works but as soon when you if you keep your eyes on Jesus if you keep your love your first love Jesus if you keep your first priority Jesus then everything else will fall into place then you won't burn out in any area of your life because you keep your focus on on him not on what you're doing not on anything else but him alone so do not do not forsake your first love and we're gonna get into how to keep that first love how to keep that fire burning but right now I just want to read to us scripture and so we can see what has happened to to, to this church in particular is that they lost their first love but Jesus says even though you've lost your first love remember from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first work so else I will come unto thee quickly or remove the candlestick out of his place except thou repent so there is always repentance so if you are here today watching this video and you say but that is me I've lost my first love I've lost that intimacy that I had with the Lord when I first got saved I've lost that first love relationship with the Lord when I first got baptized with the Holy Ghost or first got immersed and baptized in water I've got good news for you today you can repent and remember from whence you are fallen and return to that place
and it doesn't have to take you years to return to that place. You can make up your mind today and say, I want to return to my first love. And it will happen quickly. Because remember, you, the Lord never left you. The Lord never left. But you can continue in that same relationship with the Lord that you had at first. In Jesus' mighty name. Revelation 3.14 and, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things say the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable, and poor and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye souls, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore, and repent. Okay, so here we see a lukewarm church. The church of Laodicea was a lukewarm church, which is why God rebuked him. He said, because you are neither cold nor hot, but because you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. Jesus said, okay, I can see you guys are not against me, but you guys aren't for me. You are in the middle. You are sitting on the fence. And even though you're sitting on the fence, you think you think sitting on the fence is a good thing. But let me tell you right now, Jesus said, if you do not gather with me, then you scatter abroad. So you are either for me or against me. But they thought to be in the middle. We're not completely on fire. We're also not cold. We look warm. But, and they thought that was a good place to be. But the Lord said, listen here. I'd rather have you be cold than lukewarm. So even lukewarm is actually in the eyes of the Lord being worse than a cold person. You can be an outright sinner, guns blazing on your way to hell, and that would be better in the eyes of Jesus than you being lukewarm, not knowing on whose side you are. Now, let me just say this. And again, today is a rebuke in love, but also a message of Turning people back to the Lord, turning people back to their first love. Because I can sit here today and say, yeah, the church is lukewarm, the church has lost their first love. And then you can leave this channel and go away feeling condemned. And say, oh, yeah, you're right, I can't do anything right, I'm such a failure. Or I can speak the truth in love and say, but yeah, you, you, the Lord says repent. Turn from your look. You can repent today from your lukewarmness. And to be lukewarm doesn't just mean one foot in the to have one foot in the church and one foot in the world. You know, you can go to church every single Sunday of your life and live a very morally excellent life. Even a morally excellent life that Christians strive to live and still be lukewarm. Why? Because being lukewarm has become such a thing of like I think, okay, I, I think I'm, I'm on fire for the Lord just because I don't drink or I don't smoke or I don't party with the world. But then again, I'm not on fire for the Lord. Why not? Because, how can I say it? Because I don't have a, 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 a desire, a, the same desire for the Lord that I had at first. I don't have, have that, 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 that fire. For, for, for Jesus. I'm basically just, I'm just sitting on my couch and I'm just floating around. I'm living a morally perfect life, excellent life, and I'm, you know, I'm going to church on Sundays, but I'm still, I'm, I'm, I find myself in this lukewarm place. I've got no interest in the things of God. Even though I don't want to go to the world because my mom or my dad brought me up in a Christian way and I've got such a guilty conscience that even though when I touch me I have a guilty conscience but I've got no desire for the word of God. I've got no desire for prayer. I've got no desire for, to win souls. 
then you've 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 also grown lukewarm. So don't make that mistake of thinking just because I'm a morally good person, I'm I'm on fire for Jesus and not lukewarm. But those that are partying and in the world and going to church on Sundays, yeah, they're the lukewarm ones. Because that's where I was once upon a time in my life, and that's a very big mistake. So but the Lord said, Repent ye therefore and and he says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. So if you are lukewarm today, the Lord Jesus is telling you, I counsel you to buy of me gold that is tried in the fire. So if you are lukewarm today, you can decide today, I don't want to be lukewarm anymore. I want to be set ablaze for the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, you are the baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Come and baptize me in your Holy Ghost and fire today in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 25. We haven't gotten to the really practical, nice things yet. But let me, I just want I have, to, I have to read these scriptures. Matthew 25. One of the. Let me just add this. One of the one of the meters, like like a meter that you can you can use to check. You can you know you can see yourself in your own life whether you look warm or cold or hot. You can see. Um, you can measure your life to, to the Word of God and see, okay, am I on par? Am I on fire? Am I lukewarm? Am I cold? And one of the measuring sticks, measuring rods we can use, if you will, to see if we're on fire is um, other than do we still love Jesus? Do we still attend church? Do we still, um, are we still in the Word? Are we still in prayer? Other than those things are, for me, is are you still... Are you still are you a soul winner? Are you still a soul winner? Are you still are you winning souls? Like remember when he when he just got saved, when he just got baptized in the Holy Ghost, it was like you just spoke about Jesus. All you can do is go to people and speak about Jesus. All you can do is win all you can do is win souls. All you thought about was soul, 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 souls. But now you've grown away from that. You've gone away from that and now it's like it's been it's been a while since you've won since you've told anyone about the Lord and that that may be a sign of of or oh, I'm not gonna say that may be a sign that is a sign of you growing growing cold and or growing lukewarm um, but if that is you again no condemnation just go to the Lord and say Lord that is me and I repent before you today and I choose to go back to get back to go back to that place in Jesus name Matthew 25 okay then it says Matthew 25 is a parable that Jesus taught which says then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom and five of them were wise and five were foolish they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept and at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. For while they yet went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in and with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Okay, now I wanted to us to, to turn our attention to verse 12. It says, But he answered and said, Verily I know you not. That word know there is an intimate is an intimate knowledge so it's not just someone that says yeah I know the Lord Jesus Christ but it's someone that's actually spent time in the presence of God so to, for the Lord to say I, I know you not is not to say that I didn't know I didn't know who you are but it's for the Lord to say like listen here like I, I know you gave your life to me in church that one time but but Ever since, but I never knew you intimately. You never spent time with me. You never spent time in my presence. Um, you were never like Mary that, that, that sat at my feet. You were never like John the Baptist that, that, that listened to my heartbeat, that, that was laying on, on my chest. So that's the knowing that the Lord is talking about. That's an intimate knowledge. Uh, 
and I just want us to also just look at Matthew 25 closely here. It says that there were ten, ten virgins, right? And only five of them had enough oil in the lampstands to make it, to make it into the, to, to make it at the end. So, remember what I said in the beginning when I spoke about being lukewarm. All of these ten, vir these ten bridesmaids were virgins. All ten of them were virgins, which means they had a, they had a relationship with the Lord. They lived a, a holy lifestyle, a morally excellent lifestyle, but yet there were five that did not have enough oil in their lampstands to make it to go in to the marriage supper of the Lamb with the bridegroom that actually they had the door shut to them and the Lord said I know you not I never knew you intimately even though you confessed me as Lord and Savior and even though you lived what you would call a morally excellent excellent life you were still your 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 life you d you did not come close to me you did not fellowship with me you did not lay at my feet you did not you did not buy from me oil for your lampstand so that your fire could keep on burning. You see, because if you look at a lampstand, especially in those days they had the oil, and the oil kept the fire burning. The oil ran out, the fire was gone. So the thing is, if they did not have oil, their oil ran out, which means their fire went out. And the thing is, who is the oil? Who does, what does oil represent in the Bible? It represents the Holy Spirit. Now, I understand that the Holy Spirit is in us and all of that. But there is something called entertaining the presence of God. And if you don't entertain the presence of God long enough, it's a, it will be a slippery slope to becoming lukewarm and becoming cold. How do we entertain the presence of God? How do we keep the fire burning? How do we keep that first love alive in our lives and in our hearts? And that's what I'm going to get into today. That was just the introduction. Jude 1 verse 20. Okay, so these are the steps on how to keep the fire burning. Okay, so if you have a notebook, take notes. And put these things into practice in your life. Jude 1 20 says, But ye beloved, building yourselves on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Ghost. Okay, so step number one is praying in the Holy Ghost. Because Jude 1 verse 20 says, You build yourselves up, you build up your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Um, Paul told Timothy, son in the faith, to fan the flame. Right? So you can fan the flame that you received from the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, um, a minister once said, you know, that the priests... Uh, that God sent the fire, but the priest kept it burning. Same today, God sends the fire, Jesus sends the fire, He's the baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire. But the priests, you and I, we keep it burning. By, by doing what? First thing is by praying in the Holy Ghost. Because by praying in the Holy Ghost is a way that we fan the flame that we've received. Ephesians 5.19, which is... In this, along the, which speaks along the same lines as Jude one twenty, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so another way to keep the fire burning is speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So it's always giving, and it says you're giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So to keep the fire is number one, pray in the Holy Ghost. Number two is speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord and giving thanks. So it's a lifestyle of thankfulness, it's a lifestyle of praise and worship, it's a lifestyle of meditating upon the things of God that will keep you on fire for the Lord. You know, it's, it's stupid to think that, you, you, that you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost once and now you, you're always going to keep that same fire. 
You can't always keep that same fire and that fire can increase. But if that fire is not maintained, then you will burn out and you will go, look, go lukewarm and cold. Why do I say that? If I light the fire in a fireplace and I just and I don't put more logs on that fire, what's gonna happen? That fire is gonna go out. But if I keep on maintaining that fire and um, throwing logs on that fire, then the fire is gonna burn, 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 and even brighter and brighter and brighter. Why? Because I, 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 um, what, what do you call it when you, um, because I maintained that fire. Not only did I maintain it, but I serviced it. I, I went back every, every, every half hour or so. I go back to the fire. See, is it still burning? No, I want, okay, now I'm cold. Winter is coming. Winter, every day is getting colder. Okay, we need more logs. We need more wood. That's how you keep the fire burning. The, the same as you keep, let's think about it in the natural. Because in the natural is like, okay, how do I keep a fire burning in the natural? Okay, I throw more logs on. You have to do something to keep a fire burning in the natural. Same in the spirit. You don't just receive a fire spiritually and then it will keep burning forever. But you need to maintain that fire. You need to um, make sure that, that fire keeps burning. And how do we do that? By praying the Holy Ghost and by singing psalms to the Lord, giving thanks to the Lord, by praising Him, by worshipping Him, by spending time with Him in prayer. Jeremiah 23 verse 9 Meditate on the word That is another key You say why is that a key to keeping the fire of God I'm so glad you asked Jeremiah 23 verse 29 Says Is not my word like as a fire Saith the Lord And like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces Okay so the Lord says His word is like a fire and so what happens when we, so this word is fire. So what happens when we meditate upon this word? The fire that is upon this word will come upon us. And that's how we get set ablaze. So I would encourage you today, and even myself, to get in this word each and every day. Do not let a day go by without you meditating and reading this word. Because this word is what's going to keep you hungry for more of God. It's what's going to keep you thirsty for more of God. It's what's going to keep your fire burning for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you right now. Because this word is like a fire. So if you want to be set ablaze by God, stay in the word. Stay in his word. In Jesus name. You know the word meditate means to eat. One of the words to meditate. So to meditate upon the word of God literally means to take, to eat the word of God, to take it in. To, 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 you don't just read it nonchalantly like you are a history novel or whatever. But you take in what you're reading. You're reading it. You're eating it. It's like a very, it's like a meal that you are, I mean, everyone loves to eat. I mean, really like if I took you now to a feast and sat you around with kings and you had a five star meal, you would love to eat. You would like, you would feast on that food and you would enjoy it. The same with the word of God. It, it should be an enjoyable thing. It should be a thing of where it's like time for me to feast on the word of God today. Uh, this is my feasting time. This is my feasting hour in Jesus name. Hebrew, okay, Hebrews 12, 29. Okay, so the med so it's praying the Holy Ghost, singing psalms in your heart to God, meditate on the Word, and Hebrews 12, 29 says, God is a consuming fire. God is a consuming fire. So God is fire. Just like the Word is fire, God is fire. So the closer we move to God in prayer, in, in the Word, in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the more we will set ablaze. The closer we move to God, the more we will be set ablaze. The more we will be, that fire of God will rub off on us. And that fire that is upon our lives will increase and increase and increase and increase. In Jesus' name. Um, because the Lord says in James 4 verse 8, says, uh, you, If you draw nigh unto me, I will draw nigh unto you. So we have to take that step towards God. For him to take a step toward us. In Jesus name. So we have to move closer to the fire. Which is God. To be set ablaze. In Jesus name. Okay. This one is an important one. 
Who do you surround yourself with? That's another key, another step. Who do you surround yourself with? Do you surround yourself with people that are cold? People that have no interest in God? Do you surround yourself with people that are lukewarm? That go to church on Sundays, but during the week they, they, their life resembles nothing of, of the Lord Jesus? Or do you hang out and fellowship and consume your, and, and, and spend your time with people that are also on fire for the Lord, that also spend the time in the Word and in prayer? Because let me tell you something, who you surround yourself with is very, makes a difference in who you will turn out to be. If you spend your time with on fire Christians, you'll become an on fire Christian. If you spend your time with lukewarm, mammy pammy believers and even people that aren't, that aren't in the kingdom of God, sooner or later they, you're going to become like them. Because the Bible doesn't say for no reason at all that, the, um, that bad company corrupts good character. And in, 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 in 1 Corinthians, um, what fellowship does life and light and darkness have in common? Right? So the thing is, you can, you, can, you can be here listening to this broadcast today as a Christian and say, No, but I hang out with, 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 with unbelievers and things like that. And, and, and um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to set them ablaze for the kingdom of God. But listen, my friend, you can't override scripture. You can't override the word of God. If the word of God says bad company corrupts good character, then that's what will happen. If the word of God says you cannot fill it, light and darkness can't fellowship with one another then why do you even go against the word of God and say no but I can prove the word of God wrong I'm, I, I can I can really we, I'm not saying that we should be Pharisees and try to escape from worldly things and worldly people and, and go hide in a closet somewhere waiting for the rapture to happen we have to go out in the world and make an impact but after you've done, after you have one soul for the kingdom of God, after you have been in the world and pulling souls out of, hell, out of the fires of hell, go back to a safe place and fellowship with people that you know are on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. So God, who do you surround yourself with? If you surround yourself with, with eagles, you'll become an eagle. If you surround yourself with giant killers, you'll become a giant killer. But if you hang out with chickens and farm chickens and plants who nurse, that is what you will become. If you, you know what I mean, you can take a shower and be the cleanest per, you can take the, cl the cleanest shower you've ever taken in your life. But if you go jump in a pigsty with the pigs and be, spend time there with the pigs for 10 minutes and you'll stink. So, okay, I leave it there. All, I'm not saying at all, again, let me just reiterate what I said. I'm not saying that we shouldn't love people, that we shouldn't care people about people, we shouldn't go out and win the lost. But I'm saying, after we've done that, who do you fellowship with? There's a difference between witnessing to people and fellowshipping with people. There's a big difference. If, a, if, if someone needs the Lord, a friend of yours that was in the world, and they want to go have a coffee with you, go have a coffee with them. Go speak to them about the Lord. But you need to make a clear-cut decision. Who do you hang out with? Who do you surround yourself with? Because there are many people watching this that you need, you are already thinking about people in your head. Yes, but that friend is not a good influence on me. That friend is not a good influence on me. You need to cut them out of your life. And it's not that you have to go and speak to them and tell them, like, listen, yeah, I'm going to cut you out of my life. Just stop talking to them. Just stop fellowshipping with them. And, 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 and many people say, no, but that's, that's not Christ-like. That's not godly. Really, that, that's not Christ-like. Je when Jesus sent out his apostles in Matthew 10 to go and preach the gospel, he said, greet no one by the way. 
It means don't stop and greet people. You go and focus on your mission. Focus on what you're called to do. Many people that we hang out with are actually stumbling blocks to what the Lord has called us to do. Or actually hindrances to what the Lord has called us to do. Get those people out of your life in Jesus' name. Anyways, ask Jesus. Ask Jesus. That's the next key. Ask Jesus, who is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire, to keep the fire burning in your life. Every day, he asked the Lord, Lord, just like the disciples when they were baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire in Acts chapter 2, but in Acts chapter 4, they were filled again. Which means the one that baptized them in the Holy Ghost and fire kept that fire burning. So you ask the Lord, Lord Jesus, fan this flame. Lord Jesus, don't let that this fire that I have in me burn out. But let it increase. Let it grow the more, the more, and the more. Next key. Be a soul winner. How do I keep the fire burning? You continue to be a soul winner. I read in Revelations 2, 1, 2, 5. Where Jesus said, you have left your first love, but do the same works you did at first. What are those same works you did at first? I remember when I just got saved. Uh, I, I told people about Jesus. Not because it was a work for me. Because I enjoyed doing it. I loved it. I loved telling people about Jesus. I, just, I loved making Jesus' name famous in the earth. But somewhere along the line, you, you, you lose that passion for souls. But if you go back to that, if you say, Lord, I realize that I've lost my passion for souls. Give me a fresh fire. To be a soul winner. Then immediately you, you'll get right, right back into being on fire for the Lord. Because being a soul winner will keep you on fire for Jesus. It, it, it just will. I'm not saying that you should be, be, be a soul winner out of, out of um, compulsion. But you say, but you can come get to a place where you say, Lord, soul winning has become a job for me. And, 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 and. By all means, it takes work to win souls. The kingdom of God, it is work. But Lord, let this be a joyful experience for me. It is, winning souls has become a burden for me. But I want it to be joyful again. I want, Lord, give me a love for souls. And like I said, a barometer, a bar, yeah, a barometer that you can see whether you've, how uh, uh, far you offer the Lord. <coughs> Is how often do you speak to people about Jesus? How on fire, how excited are you to tell people about Jesus? That is your, I would say, the mark that you can look at whether you've grown cold or lukewarm. But be a soul winner. And that is what will keep you on fire for the Lord. Is being a soul winner. Being a soul winner. Because you can't talk about Jesus and not be set ablaze. Someone, some, sometime or another. You can't speak about Jesus without falling more in love with Him. I remember when I, when I, when, when you meet, when you, when I first <coughs> met my wife. It's like you can't stop talking about this person. You can't stop talking about this woman in your life that God has told, that God has like ordained to be your wife. You're like, wow. You tell your, you actually irritate your friends around the dinner table and your family members because you just can't stop talking about this woman in your life that God has sent over your path to be your wife. You're like, wow. Then it's just like that. So the same with the Lord. When you're on fire for the Lord, it's not like you, you win souls because it's a duty or a job. It's, it's something that you do because it's a lifestyle. You're so in love with Jesus. And the more you speak about Him, the more in love you'll be. The more in love you'll, you'll be with Jesus. Because you just speak about Him all day. I mean, I've left, um, I've left brides. In South Africa, we'll call it brides. In another part of the world, they might call it barbecues or what have you. Um, then I've left places like that where I just all I did was speak about Jesus all I did was speak about the Lord and then I left I leave the place I don't leave that bri or that um, fellowship whatever um, drained but I leave that place on fire for the Lord because I just spent like two hours speaking about him and I just leave more in love with him amen amen like David this is another key like David, pray God, restore unto me 
the joy of my salvation. That's another way I can, how you can keep on keep your fire for the Lord. Is every day you pray, you say like David, I'm standing here today and say, Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. The same joy I had first when I got saved. Restore unto me that same joy. Restore unto me that same fire. Restore unto me that same hunger and desire to know you more in Jesus' name. Lord, I want to be in love with you. You know, people say, people say after you've been born again for a while, they say no, but you've, you, 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 you've grown out of you can you can grow out of that in love phase with the Lord. And what a bunch of nonsense! I want to stay in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be on that honeymoon phase with the Lord Jesus every all the days of my life. I don't want that that phase to be like. Yeah, I was like that then. I don't want to see an on a young Christian that's a year in the Lord and see him on fire with the Lord, on f set ablaze for the Lord Jesus Christ and His kingdom, and I'm that grumpy old religious person in the corner saying, "Yeah, I used to be like that, but I've matured. I've matured in the Lord, brother. I, I was like that once, but one day that young believer will see life. The life of a Christian is not all that." Glimmer glamour and lollipop and roses, but life is tough God forbid that I ever become that person But let me be but let me stay The person that is on fire for the Lord even when I'm 20 years in Christ that I'm still That I'm even more in love with Jesus and even more radical than I was at first in Jesus name Romans 12 is 1 and 2. This is the last key Become a living sacrifice. Why do I say become a living sacrifice? Romans 12.1 let, let me read it first and then I'll deliver commentary on it. Romans 12.1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, focus on verse 1. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Okay, so it says, Present your bodies as a living sacrifice unto God. What does that mean? It means that... You lay your life down on the altar of God daily. You're a living sacrifice. In the Old Testament, what happened to a sacrifice? It got placed on the altar and it got burned with the fire of God. Right? Okay. So what happens to you when you place yourself on the altar of God and you say, God, I'm here today. Lay my life down before you. I'm, I'm, your, I'm a living sacrifice today. Today I'm laying down my life. I'm denying myself. I'm taking my cross and I'm following you. There you immediately put yourself on the altar of God. And you've given God legal right to come with his fire and to set you ablaze. Because every sacrifice in the Old Testament was, was, was set ablaze with the fire of God. And, the, and nothing's changed. So if you are a living sacrifice, if you open up yourself to be a living sacrifice to God on a daily basis, there will be fresh fire for you each and every single day of your life. So those are keys that we, can have, that we have as believers in the Word of God on how to be set ablaze. So we don't have to worry about, okay, Lord, I, got, I, I, got, I was baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire yesterday, but how do I keep this fire burning? Today you've, I've been given keys. Today you've been given keys. Let's put these keys into practice. And we will see how the Lord will just increase us in our lives. In our spiritual walk with God. Because God's will for us is to grow from glory to glory and strength to strength. He wants to see increase. The life of a believer should never be decrease. The life of a believer should never be um, a life of callous. A life of just floating around and staying the same. But a life of a believer should always be increase. If there's not increase in your life, in any, any area, any form, uh, then I wonder, then you should question yourself and question yourself and ask yourself, why is nothing working out for me? And get back to, to the word of God. Get back on your face and ask God to have mercy on you. 
and so that you can be set ablaze once more. Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added, added unto you. The only thing that should decrease, especially when you are um, coming at an age where your metabolism isn't as it once was, is your weight. Okay, that's the only thing that should decrease. But as for the things of God in your life, they should increase. Um, <laughs> in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that you were blessed by this sermon today and by this teaching. And we will see you next time for another uh, for another broadcast. Uh, but I just pray that you are blessed today. Share it with your friends. Please like, subscribe, and tune in for more videos. And I pray that you'll be blessed. And I pray that the Lord will set everyone watching this broadcast today. Set them blaze with your fire, and let us keep that fire burning and keep our eyes on Jesus. And never lose that first love. And if we have, we repent today and we, we decide to fix our eyes upon you again today. You know, as that old song goes, um, you know, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full at his wonderful face. Um, and as the, as the things of the world, and then the things of the world will grow strangely dim as we as we um, just look upon his face and as we are behold his glory and his grace and that's what will happen the closer we move to jesus the the the, the dimmer the things of this world will get uh, we'll see you next time for another video and i pray you be blessed today in jesus name amen